Ahoy mateys and welcome back aboard my 1978 Chris Craft Corinthian. It has been a while and that is entirely on me. Yeah, I think the last time we left off was in November when I finally conquered my fear of controlling this boat. There's a lot that could go wrong and it's scary to think about that. But if you think about what could go wrong, you'll never think about what could go right. That's huge, and that is really kind of crazy. That's where it left off, because that's a huge, like, cliffhanger. What happens next? Like, how does it go? Well, hopefully this video will help kind of explain some of that. Maybe not excuse it, but explain it. And I'll catch you up with what's going on around here, because I really do want to make more videos, and I need your help kind of holding me to that. A lot of y'all have been commenting, and that's really been good. That's, that's all I want, is just to make videos about this boat. So let's do that. Okay, so after that video where I took this 26,000 pound, 38 foot long boat out by myself, completely alone, oh my gosh, I pulled it in perfectly, like no issues at all. It was great, which is perfect because the next weekend, my parents and my grandparents were coming in town for Thanksgiving. I took like two or three days off and we were going to have so much fun on the boat. They got an Airbnb, uh, which actually happened to have its own tiny little dock attached to it, which was on a creek, which was just deep enough for this boat to get down. So the boat draws like three feet of water beneath it, and I think the creek was four feet deep. Ahoy! So we were churning up mud along the way, but we never hit anything solid, and it was totally worth it because they were able to stay in the Airbnb, and I was able to stay on the boat and the boat was able to be there whenever we wanted to take it out, which was so great, and we did. Thanksgiving lunch, we just decided to pack up, get on the boat, go into the St. John's River, drop anchor. Yeah, I have a, a brand new anchor system now, actually. I, I do have video of that, so that's probably gonna be the next thing I do. I, I'm, I'm gonna edit that together, and you'll get to see how I installed this anchor system. But we dropped anchor, and we just started grilling burgers on Thanksgiving lunch, which sounds completely crazy, but in Florida, it's actually warm enough to do that kind of thing, and it's so much fun. And then we just spent time on the water, and we went downtown and came back. It was so great. And then I think either the next day or the day after that, we went downtown again for the Jacksonville Christmas Boat Cruise. Yeah, that's, that's the one. So, no, no, Jacksonville Christmas Boat Parade. I knew I'd forget it. But we went down there. I, I docked the, the boat early in the front row so I knew we would have the best seats in town. And it was so perfect. We got to see all the boats going by. They were lit up and beautiful for Christmas. And here's the thing. If you've never been to a downtown Jacksonville big event, there are going to be fireworks. There are going to be incredible fireworks. And there's a finale that I will not even spoil for you. But my family didn't even know there were going to be fireworks. I kept that a secret and they, their minds were blown when just things started going off. It was so much fun. And one of the, I kid you not, best moments of my life was just being there. It was the culmination of everything I wanted and everything I had worked so hard to do. And just being able to share that and have people be comfortable on the boat where my effort and my dedication to it has helped other people not think about it at all. That's what's so great. So uh, long story short, the boat worked absolutely perfectly for that entire week up until I had to move it back from downtown to here at the dock. And somewhere along that, that, final leg of the most perfect boating week ever, I lost starboard reverse. It just gone. I'm in the middle of the water. There's a, like a train bridge is coming down and I've got to maneuver and I don't have reverse on my right side. And I, I didn't freak out. I knew how to conquer my feel it, fear at this point And I knew that panicking would not solve anything. So I just slowly and carefully pulled everything back, just give my time, time, myself time to think, and I planned out a new route into my dock because there's one, two, three, four, depending on how you count, turns. 
that I have to make very precisely or else I will be running into quarter million dollar boats. I didn't want to do that. So I planned it out very precisely. I only had one shot to do it without reverse on my on my uh, starboard side and I did it perfectly. No issues. It looked like it was planned because it was planned. It was just planned three minutes before it happened. But that, it's those kind of things that are so terrifying to think about and to fester in your mind. But once you get out and do it, I, I sorry, I'm, I'm rambling. Anyway, starboard reverse was out and I had to fix that somehow. And I, I'm sure that there's a lot of you who would have liked to see that from beginning to end. But I knew that this was going to be something that was going to be very hard. <laughs> And I needed to be able to focus on doing it the right way and doing it slowly. And it took three months to do it correctly because I did it all myself. Um, I opened it up. I diagnosed the problem. I found the broken parts. I pulled them out. I made sure there was no like metal bits left in the, uh, the uh, transmission fluid pan. And I, I had the parts remade and I reinstalled them myself. And it took a long time to do that correctly. And it just wouldn't have been fun to watch that kind of project go out the way it did on a YouTube video. And I, I know, like I said, people are going to be upset that they didn't see it. I might have some pictures that you've seen, like, coming up right now. But anyway. Um, part of why I didn't make a video about that was I had just experienced the highest high of boat ownership in my entire life. Being able to do something great to give the boat as a gift to my family and to like to go from that to just being on a floating barge in the middle of the river again that's where I spent so much time is where this boat can't move and I was right back to that point and it was kind of discouraging but I knew I just needed to get it done and I didn't need to go on camera and make a big deal out of it so now that is finished and you've probably noticed that, uh, this place looks like a mess. And that is for a reason. When that project was finished and I had taken it out on its inaugural cruise, yay, we did it, woohoo. Uh, actually, it was a lot more fun than that, but anyway. After this was all finished, I just decided it's time to revamp, to redecorate, to renovate the salon area. Because this carpet was absolutely nasty, so I ripped all of this carpet out. And it's being remade at a local place here in town. Uh, it's going to be like a little bit less than $1,000 total, but I think it's totally worth it because that's going to be one thing that's going to really radically change the entire vibe of the inside of the salon here. That carpet was so old and nasty and stained and falling apart and leaving dust everywhere that I just couldn't handle it. Um, and so now what I'm going to have clean white, or kind of off-white, but clean new carpet in here. This is going to be a shoes off zone. I know a lot of people do that already with their boats, but for me, I just didn't care because the carpet was dirty anyway. But nope, shoes off from here on forward. And to go with that, I'm going to get all new overhead coverings. You may have seen this. I don't know, is this on camera? Yeah, kinda. So this third of the boat is already uh, covered in this really, really nice overhead fabric. And I'll show you some close-ups of that. So that all came from a friend. You know who you are, and I'm so grateful. There are so many things that you've been able to do for me in this boat that, that seriously would not be in this situation without you. So thank you so much for supplying that material. And, uh, yeah, I've got so many more projects going on. I'm going to completely redo the galley um, countertop and sink and all of that. I'm going to wire up some new lights. I've got a anchor light that I need to install because for some reason I don't think this boat ever had an anchor light even though it has switches on the upper and lower helms for that so I need to wire this into the anchor light switches because something I really want to do one thing I, I feel like it's the ultimate boating experience that I haven't done yet is take the boat out on like a Saturday afternoon drop anchor just enjoy the sunset being on the boat spend the night on anchor. Wake up the next morning, come back. And I really want to do that. And I really want y'all to be a part of that. I'm being serious here because you have had so many great ideas and being able to share this project with you has meant so much to me. 
So I would really love to do some kind of live Q&A, just a hangout session on the boat on Anchor where I can actually hear you this time because the last time we tried to do that I was moving the boat at the same time and the wind noise was horrible. But we'll actually get the audio right this time and we'll be able to hang out on the boat together at Anchor. It's gonna be so much fun. So be on the lookout for that. Hit that little notification bell so you know when it happens because weather uh, is always unpredictable. I don't know if it's gonna be raining, too windy, what the deal is. So if I set a date, then odds are it might not happen. But I'm gonna try to do it this weekend. So make sure you have those notifications on so you'll see it when it happens. Thank you so much for tuning in. More videos to come. Like I said, that Anchor video is going to be fun where I install that Anchor and Chain. That was a, a pretty big project too. So I'll see y'all next time. Thank you.